All right, joining us on the broadcast, we have Charan Singh Sapra, spokesperson of the Congress Party. We have Mr. Bala Chandra Sirsat. He is uh, the opposition leader in the BMC uh, and the spokesperson for the BJP, joining us from Mumbai. We also have Mr. Chandrasekhar Prabhu, who is uh, an urban planner and he's formerly the president of the MHADA. Let me then begin by asking you, Mr. Prabhu, you know, not the first incident that we're reporting in the span of the last few months. There have been two building collapse cases uh, in Mumbai in, in just the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, what does one make of this? Is this just terrible planning? Uh, is our infrastructure crumbling because we can't handle the rains? How would you make sense of these? 11 people have lost their lives. See, the collapses in Mumbai and the, the present collapse in Mahar needs to be seen separately. Okay. In Mumbai, we have more than 16,000 buildings which have outlived their lifespan, their effective lifespan. They've been built prior to 1940. Right. That means they are at least 80 years old. Okay. So they have outlived their lifespan. The government is repairing them time and again. But still, it's, you know, the, all these buildings are so old that they could collapse at any stage. So to render them, uh, uh, you know, in a stable condition is what the government's uh, job is. In Mahad, it's a different thing altogether. Mahad, it's a brand new building. Seven-year-old building means it's a brand new building. There is no reason why it could have collapsed unless either the design is faulty or the material used is not proper. Overall, or the supervision is not correct. Basically, it's a human error okay. which has caused this uh, collapse. Now, the law unfortunately favors these kind of accidents. You know, the municipal corporation can only check whether the given plans and the construction is as per the given plans. Right. Unfortunately, the engineers do not have the responsibility of checking the quality that is left to the architect or the structural engineer. Now, architect and structural engineer, sometimes the contractor doesn't even, or the builder doesn't even consult the right. architect and the structural engineer. And he builds whatever he wants. And even if the architect and structural engineer give a certificate that this is not as per my specification, the builder is not bothered. Right. So it is the responsibility when the occupation certificate is given by the municipal corporation, hmm. the concerned engineer or the chief engineer, it's his responsibility to ensure whether the building is capable of taking such a load. If he has not done his duty, then he is also equally responsible. So the, the inferior quality of construction right. and the system wherein the responsibility of checking the quality is not given on the municipal corporation. Both these things are totally responsible for these deaths. And there is no reason why a seven-year-old building should collapse like this, right. however much okay. the rain may I think I think you, you know, you've put several of these developments into perspective. One needs to disassociate the incidents that one has recently covered in Mumbai, for instance, from this particular story, uh, because those buildings are much older. This is a new building. And uh, uh, Mr. Balachandra, you know, what, you, you, what you've heard Mr. Prabhu say pretty unequivocally is that this is human error. 100% because structural stability has to be checked by structural engineer. Basically, the whole design should be designed structurally stable. The steel used, cement used, that design, it should be made properly to take the load and at the same time, it should be inspected during construction. Normally what happens, architects and structural engineers are designing on paper, but on site, the work is being skilled, untrained people okay. in their own way, and then such mishap can happen. Okay, so you're admitting in a certain sense 
that this is human error. Charan Singh Sapra, where does the buck stop? Because, you know, we are, this, this Raigarh is, is one story, but this is a story that actually concerns citizens across the country living in high rises. This was a five-story building. And, you know, one has seen an above average monsoon in several parts of the country. There's been flooding uh, and structures are collapsing. I mean, 11 people have lost their lives. And this is this is a number that is continuing to rise as the day progresses. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And I will like to say that Mr. Prabhu has explained very well to you that the old buildings in Mumbai uh, should be seen in a different way. And... Uh, uh, this Raigad case is a different case, which is definitely a human error. Right. And uh, definitely the builder as well as the engineers, whether that is the executive engineer or the chief engineer of the municipal corporation of Raigad, they are culpable, they are responsible for whatever uh, has happened. And definitely the government will take action against them. This is a human error and level lives due to a human error. This should not be a case with a building which is just built five or seven years ago. Uh, had it been Mumbai like 40 years, 45 years, 50 years, still, uh, everybody is responsible right. for that. Uh, the Mahara, Mahara as well as the Housing Authority have been taken care of the building. There is a structural thing which is, uh, you know, uh, monitored by these uh, organizations. But I don't know why a new building had to come down. And uh, uh, it, it is taking so much of time uh, to do the relief work also for that. Right. Uh, I want to then go back to you, uh, Mr. Prabhu, because, you know, you raised several issues. And now my question to you is, is pretty simple. Where does the buck stop? I mean, you're saying that this is a new building. You've said it at the very outset that this is a sheer case of human error. Where does the buck stop? Does it stop with the builder? Does it stop with the authority? You know, how do we know who made a quick buck, which has now led to several lives being lost? Everybody in inquiry will immediately bring it out. The builder who's, who has made profits out of this is primarily responsible. If the builder himself is the contractor, more reason for holding the builder responsible. If the builder has outsourced the contracting work to someone, then whoever is the contractor, he is responsible. The material supplier, whether spurious material has been given, whether adulterated cement right. has been used, whether wrong kind of steel has been used all this will come out if there is a if there is an mm. inquiry but the municipal corporation which gives the occupation certificate mm. cannot escape the blame okay. if the building is so bad that within five or seven years it is collapsing it means that a good engineer if he visits site by just by sheer looking at the building should be in a position to say that the quality is and what's the process good. of of periodic checks being done in order to you know ensure that these buildings are earthquake safe that these buildings are safe at times of incessant rainfall should there be periodic checks done are there periodic checks done mr prabhu no that's the you see that's the that's the main flaw in the law the main flaw in the law is that the engineer comes and only measures the fsi that has been sanctioned and tallies it with the building uh, plan right. saying that you have submitted this building plan the building was supposed to be 100 feet by 100 feet have you done 101 feet by 101 feet or have you stuck right. to 100 feet what, by 100 what feet action? so he just measures okay. he doesn't he is not responsible so for the quality that is what okay. i've been several, saying all the several time. several gaping loopholes in the system that you've exposed uh, mr balachandra let me just ask you where does the buck stop what happens from here is accountability going to be fixed and like i said unfortunately the death toll in this case has been rising by the hour i'm now being told that there are 13 people who've lost their lives in this incident there are five bodies that have been retrieved uh, you know in an hour it's obviously a very complicated uh, operation that is taking place from the visuals that we are putting out on our screens. Where does the buck stop? How do we know who is to, to be held responsible? How can we most importantly make an example of these stories so they don't repeat themselves? See, basically when the building is being constructed, planning is done by architect, structural stability design is done by structural engineer, and construction is done by construction supervisor and engineer, they are working in isolation. Architect sitting in a room prepares the plan, 
structural engineer on paper designs structural stability but whether it is actually implemented and enforced on site or not right is not checked by these people at the same time the municipal authorities all are civil engineer authority engineers are civil okay. engineers they are not structural engineers okay so i so think i think several several of those problems have been highlighted i'm afraid i'm completely out of time we please, need to please, of course work towards understand. solutions because no, at I the end of the to, day I there are lives that have been something. lost I'm I'm afraid I'm completely out of time this is obviously a conversation we must continue to have thank you so much uh, all of you for joining me on the broadcast